Nerve cell communication. Let's do this. Are you ready? I don't care where you are or who's around. If you're ready, then click the subscribe button and keep learning. If you're saying no, then whatever. You're here now, so let's just do this. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Nerve cells talk to each other at a specialized structure called the synapse. First things first, there are two types of synapses. Electrical synapses, which are fewer in number found in the nervous system, physically connected by channel proteins forming gap junctions, and are super fast. Then there are the chemical synapses, which are more abundant, slower, and more precise and selective of the messages they send. In this lesson, we'll speak about the chemical synapses. As you know, the nerve cell has its dendrites, the nucleus, the axon, myelin sheath, and axon terminals. This hangout has two parts. The cell that sends a message is known as the transmitting neuron, or the presynaptic neuron, and the receiving neuron is known as the postsynaptic neuron. We'll go over everything in just 10 steps. Number one, the neurotransmitter molecules are made by precursors by the influence of synthesizing enzymes. Number two, the neurotransmitter molecules are packed and stored in vesicles. Some may leak out, but are destroyed by degrading enzymes. Number three, now the presynaptic neuron sends an action potential down its axon, activating sodium and potassium channels along the way. Number four, it reaches a presynaptic terminal to activate the voltage-gated calcium channels to open and release calcium into their own cytoplasm. Number five, these positively charged calcium ions cause the tiny synaptic vesicles filled with neurotransmitters to fuse with the cell membrane. Number six, the neurotransmitters are now released into the microscopically small space between the two neurons, known as a synaptic cleft. Number seven, here they bind with autoreceptors and inhibit subsequent neurotransmitter release. Number eight, the released neurotransmitters then head over to bind to receptor sites on the postsynaptic neuron. This binding of neurotransmitters opens ligand-gated ion channels, resulting in graded potentials, as you see here. Number nine. Okay, great. The signal is now initiated in the postsynaptic cell. And depending on which neurotransmitter binds to which receptor, this action may involve increasing the likelihood that the postsynaptic cell will become activated and itself fire an action potential, or decreasing it, resulting in inhibition. And finally, number 10. Now here the released neurotransmitter molecules are deactivated by either reuptake or enzymatic degradation. Eventually the neurotransmitter molecules must be cleared from the synaptic cleft. Some of them will simply drift away in a process called diffusion, and in some other cases the neurotransmitter is taken back up into the presynaptic neuron in a process called reuptake. Once back inside the presynaptic neuron, the neurotransmitter can be recycled and reused. Also, we'll find enzymes that will break down the neurotransmitter within the synapse, have its component parts sent back into the presynaptic neuron to make more neurotransmitters. I know this might be a lot, and it's okay if you need to watch it over again. Most importantly, protect your peace, take a breath, and remember that neurons that fire together, wire together. We're in this together. Are you learning something from our videos? Well then click the subscribe button to your right. We are releasing high yield lessons and ways for you to get ahead in class. Be sure to follow us on Instagram to take interactive quizzes and view your favorite diagrams. Nothing can stop you, but only if you believe in yourself. You got this.